Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another MMA show. Um, just me today. We're going to do a rundown on Munoz versus Edgar, and then just some MMA news just to catch up. So we're going to start off from the bottom of the main card, which would be Daniel Rodriguez versus Takashi Sato. Now, on Takashi Sato's debut against Ben Saunders, I loved his movement. I loved his in and out. He 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 reminded me straight away of a of vintage Lyoto Machida, and just the way he bounces in and out with a very karate base. He isn't obviously a karate fighter, but or well, maybe he is. But <laughs> he definitely goes in and out like a karate fighter, but with just absolute precision boxing, um, which showed obviously in the end of round two where lands straight down the middle, straight left, knocks Ben to the, to the ground and then just comfortably keeps his composure and just lands elbow after round, elbow. Obviously finishes Ben there. That was a good debut. He then lost to Bilal Muhammad. Now, Bilal, remember the name, is very slick. He's a bit on and off. I remember when he was undefeated and he just looked like he was going to run for a title fight but didn't end up like that. Um, he lost in round three. It was quite a very competitive fight. Um, round three, Rene Kachok, you go to the ground with Mohamed. It's kind of going to not go well for you. He's very, very strong on the ground. So I don't really take it into that, into that much consideration considering he came from Pancreas. So these, that was his second fight in the UFC. So you get a name immediately. Ben Saunders has since been cut, obviously, but he was, a not, he was a known name in the UFC. So that was a good shout for him. Then Jason Witt, which was a round one TKO win. So, he's coming off a win against Daniel Rodriguez. I love Daniel Rodriguez as well. He looks so comfortable. And he fought Tim Means. When he fought Tim Means, that rather. He just... Tim Means is... is how do you describe Tim Means? Other than just like a like a lower caliber Tony Ferguson is how I would define him. Whereas he will just do anything. He very he reminds me his fighting style is very similar to Condit. You'll just see him randomly throw spinning elbows. It's it's all about like loosey goosey arms are low, and then he'll just pop you with a itchy jab from the waist. He doesn't ever have his hands up in a tie fighting style. It's not a boxing style from you know chin guiding your chin with one hand covering the other it's just loosey-goosey it's just a flowing fighter he's pure MMA and he went against Daniel Rodriguez and he was the favorite and I was going into it not really knowing much about Daniel Rodriguez but when you just see him how comfortable he is standing you're like oh okay this guy's this guy's no house to strike so he won or he got a contract off season oh it's either two or three I'm gonna kill myself for not knowing that Season three, I'm going to say, of the Contender Series where quite a few people got him. A couple of people on this fight card actually were on that season three. It was a good season. Um, so he beat Tim Means by submission. So it showed that he has MMA skill. He's not only just a striker. He looks so comfortable standing, but when it went to the ground, he looks so comfortable still, which is great news. So you've got... Um, yeah, you've got... Rodriguez versus Takashi Sato. He beat Gabriel Green since as well. He has got a decision win. So Daniel Rodriguez, Daniel Rodriguez say that really fast, is 12 and 1. He's 6 foot 1. Takashi Sato, 16 and 3. So he's got a great record. One loss in the UFC out of three fights. So he's in, he knows he's in the real deal now. He's definitely UFC worthy. It's not like he came up from Pancrase or another another promotion and wasn't ready or whatever. He's had plenty of fights. He knows he's, he belongs here. And it's got to be competitive. You, if you don't get a loss on your record, people say you're fighting the wrong people. You know, it's, it's true, but, you know, two or three people ever, John and Khabib, pretty much. Um, so he's five foot ten versus six foot one. Doesn't really make a difference to me. Unless they're going to be clinching a lot, it's not really going to make too much of a difference a um, couple inches in it and one inch reach advantage for Rodriguez. I can't really see that playing a massive factor. I think it's just going to be a style fight. I think it's a really good matchup. They're both... Takeshi's going to be, in my opinion, going in and out, darting in and out. And Rodriguez is going to want to clip him with those low calf kicks. Um, he's got a great pivot right. As If Takeshi moves backwards, he'll just spin, cut him off the cage, hit him with a hook. Um, and we know he's got ground game. Takeshi's definitely got ground and pound, but Rodriguez definitely has submission skills. 
I think it's going to be a striking fight. I don't think it's going to be an MMA fight, um, as it were. I think it's going to be, it might be a lot of pressing against the cage. If he can work the body of Takashi, slow him down because he's a speedy little bastard. It'd be quite nice. But I do think Daniel Rodriguez, Daniel Rodriguez is going to get that. I will get that name correct one day. But I do think Rodriguez has that one. Um, so I'm going to write my name on that. That's my prediction. Um, moving on, we've got Marcin Pacchio. I don't, know how, I don't know how to say his name completely versus another Rodriguez in Mike. Now, let's start with Mike. Contender Series 5. I've got this written down. I should have written the other one down. Contender Series 5 lost to Devin Clark by decision. Not that bad. Devin Clark is a decision king. He's, uh, he's got a good gas tank for a light heavyweight. He, uh, he he almost looks like he could he could fight at middleweight with the way he he moves, but he is a big boy. He then won against Adam Milstead. He then got a no contest against John Allen, and he then lost against Da Eung Jung in round one by KO last fight. So in his four UFC fights, he has one victory two defeats, and one no contest. Four fights, one win. That's how it works out. Marcin Prachnio from Poland has lost both his UFC fights so far. One to Sam Alvey. Now, Sam Alvey isn't that good to me. Not like he's not elite level, because he clearly is. You're in the UFC, you are elite to an extent. But when you enter the UFC and you get to the, it's your top of the tree. It's like when you're in school, you reach, in, you're in junior school, you're at the top of this thing. And then you're like, yes, yes, yes. Then you get into the UFC, which is next school, but you're down here and they're up there. So you're, stuck, you're climbing the ladder all over again. And he's just been completely humbled by Sam Alvey. He came from one championship as well. And one championship is competitive. They've got really strong fighters over there. Maybe not in the light heavyweight division, though, as it is an Asian branch. And the Asian market at the moment is, like, really good for welterweight, maybe maybe lightweight and below, because the heavyweights, there's a couple really good ones. Brandon Vera's over there. Obviously fought middleweight for a long time in the UFC. Now he's a heavyweight. He's a big boy now. He looks like he's on some Mexican supplements. But Sam Alvey did knock him out. And then he lost to Uncle Liev. Now, that one I'm going to give him a pass on, because Uncle Liev looks incredible in his wins. I think he's 12 and 1 or 12 and 0. I can't remember. I can't remember his one loss because he beat Ion Kutaleba and then obviously that got put off last week due to Kutaleba getting coronavirus. So that I'm sure will be rebooked, you know, come 14 days they'll talk to Ion about it and say what do you want to do when do you want it. So he's got two KO losses. He is a good fighter. It's not showing, but he's just been knocked out twice. And that's what worries me. When you come off two knockout losses, not just two losses, not two decisions, not, it's not a hump in the road. You've been cleaned out. You got smacked. Not TKOs either. Knockouts. And you're against Mike Rodriguez. Mike Rodriguez is not a knockout artist. So I think it's a great matchup. The records are quite similar in 13-4 and four for Marcin and 10-4 and four for Mike. The height's very similar in 6-3 and 6-4. The inch is where the talking point is. Martin has a 74-inch reach, which is what I have at six foot tall. Mike Rodriguez has an 82.5-inch reach, which is what I think the fight is going to play around. I think Mike Rodriguez is good at using that long range. A lot of his decisions have come from using the range. I think if he uses that range, he has Martin's number all day. I think he's going he's gonna to jab his face off. He's going to go for the calf kick. Everyone's doing it these days. He seems to be... He's, show, he's shown he can do it. I think if he keeps the distance, as most strikers will tell you, with someone that wants to get in tight that hasn't got the advantage, use your range, use your angles, cut him off. I think if he can manage that, I think it's Mike Rodriguez's fight to lose. Other than that, there's not much to say about it because there's not much footage on the fellas and this and this whole card, to be honest, other than the main and the co-main, the whole card is kind of people coming off the contender series or making their debuts. And it's I love these cards because you finally you get to cherry pick out of them. You're like, oh, he's gonna be in like 
next pay per view, he's going to make it, and you'll see that the studs from it rubbish, basically. So I'm calling Mike Mike Rodriguez on that one. I think he's going to take it. I think he's going to. It'll be by decision. I can't see. I don't think Martin's going to get knocked out for a third time, but I think it's going to be three losses in a row, and I think he might be sent packing if if it doesn't go. You know, I can't imagine you you lose these three fights. And, you know, two of them aren't exactly to big names. Sam Alvey is... People know him because of controversy with Mark, Mark Goddard. He doesn't like him, even though he's lost those fights. He's got a good nickname in Smiling. So, but Uncle I, have, everyone will know who that is. So I don't think that's a shameful fight. It's, it depends if the UFC feel hard done by, but they've got so many fights coming up through the Contender Series right now. I think if he loses three fights, they'll just go... They'll cut him. They'll just get rid of him. Or bring in someone that wants to win almost like they'll see that not like he doesn't want to but the UFC will see it as he, he doesn't want to be here he's not training hard enough how can you lose three fights and with that record you know he'll go back to one championship probably he's not going to be out of pocket he's going to be fine one championship pay for pay fight as well uh, arguably a lot better than the UFC do so I think Mike's going to be absolutely fine and I think he'll take that as well now I've got here only four fights on the main card, so it is a shorter card. The co-main, I'm actually more excited about than the main. A lot of people have said to me, I'm crazy for that. Ovince St. Pro. Now, let's start with Ovince because people really got to know Ovince when he went five rounds with John Jones after John came back from a couple of years layoff due to unforeseen circumstances. Let's call it that. And he went five rounds with him, and I'm pretty sure he broke his arm in the second round from a high kick. Um, it showed his toughness. It showed his greatness. Um, you know, he's made Shogun who a spin on his ass. He's Von Flu choked everyone to the extent now people want to rename it the St. Prue choke, yeah? you know, the OSP choke. It's, and I believe he came from an NFL, obviously English. So knowing about American football is kind of uh, hard for me to do. But I know of it quite clearly. Is it, you know, I believe he was a linebacker for the NFL, which is a tank of a position to play. So he has the speed, the power, the athleticism, and he kind of took like a duck to water to MMA and just fell in love with striking and knocking people out. And then he fell in love with choking people out cold with his bloody shoulder. He's got an 80 inch reach against Alonzo Manyfield's 76-inch reach. But we all know Alonzo doesn't use the reach because he likes to push people against the cage, be super physical, and land those nasty uppercuts like he did to Paul Craig. And like he did to Devin, Devin Clark in the first round. Not the second or third round, because we'll go on to why he lost that fight afterwards. Over in St. Prue, last fight he had a decision, split decision loss to Ben Rothwell. Now, Ben Rothwell is a weird guy, and I don't like him. It's really creepy and he puts me off with his big airy chest and big fat titties. So, but he still lost. And Ben hadn't fought in a while before that. It was split decision. So I'm assuming some could argue. I thought Ben did win it. So I can't argue for St. Prue in that fight. Before that, he had a uh, a win against Michael Alexiuk. Try and pronounce his Polish name, Lewis. I can't. Other than Joanna Jacek and Jan Blachowicz, I cannot, or Blachowicz. There you go, I can't even do that one, so scrub that. But he won by Von Fluchoke, so he's been doing it lately, and that was in round two, so you know he goes he goes through the rounds. And then he lost before that to Nikita Krilov via Rene Kachok in round two as well. Again, to me, no shame in Nikita Krilov, because he's kind of at the same level as OSP, where they're not quite top five, but they're damn well in the top 10. So Nikita Krilov, I think, is going to eventually push into that top five and he's going to break through. O- OSP's had that chance. And I think forever now, he's going to be a five to 10 gatekeeping fighter. Nothing wrong with that if you're happy to sit there. And the, I, I think he's on quite good money by now. He's he's had so many contracts in the UFC. His record is 24 and 14. So, I mean, 38 fights. That's a lot of fights. Um he stands six foot three with an 80 inch reach. Now, we're going to talk about his lovely, lovely looking body, Alfonso Manyfield. Alfonso fought last at UFC 250, which was also no crowd, where you could. against uh, Devin Clark. So you could hear Devin Clark's dad scream in the background there. That was a great fight. 
first round came out absolutely lighting Devin Clark on fire. Everyone calls Alonso Manyfield now the first round fighter based off that fight. I think it's kind of harsh because it was the first time he'd really got into it. I think it was the first time he's ever in the second round. So, I mean, he probably wasn't prepared for it entirely because he's just been starching people in the first. He has extreme power. And considering he only had nine fights going into the Devin Clark fight, nine fights to be fighting someone like Devin Clark, who's a veteran and maybe not veteran is not the right word. Decision whore. Veteran in the in the time lapse he's been fighting. So Alfonso Manyfield had nine fights, but none of them have been at the first round. So that's equivalent to someone who's had like four fights and they've all gone 15 minutes. You know what I mean? That kind of experience is what I mean. Not veteran, but the experience of Devin Clark where he goes the distance. He knows how to use his body and his gas tank well. Alonso kind of, as it were, blew his wad and just ended up trying to push a pace in the second and third, but he just, Devin Clark just blew him apart with the body shots. He didn't know how to defend body shots at all. It was in the clinch. He was eating knee after knee after knee and body hooks. And Devin did this great thing where he'd plum clinch him, tie plum clinch him, and just throw leg kicks in the tum, it leg kicks to uh, his thigh, not to the calf. Shin to thigh in that position. It just worked. It's really unorthodox, but it worked on him. And he just seemed to have no defense. He's got a great offense in the first round. So if Ovince doesn't get cracked in this first round, Ovince just could take him to deep water in this fight. Um, Devin did get his back as well and just gave up on it. So we know he can get taken down. We know he gets tired. He did beat Paul Craig very nicely when Paul Craig kept trying to pull guard. This was before Paul Craig kind of like sorted his shit out, in my opinion. Paul Craig now is a different kind of animal as he just got his rematch with Shogun Hua, which went to a draw last time. So coming off his first round submission victory um, a few weeks ago. So the people he's beaten are good. Round one TKO over Vinicius Moreira as well. And he was on season three of Dana White's Contender Series, another one on season three. Didn't get in, went back, beat two other people in a different organization. I cannot remember the organization. And then uh, I've got written here, series nine came back. Got the contract since then. It looked great. He, he, he did look great in the Devin Clark fight. It was just rounds, the first two minutes of round two, he looked okay. So you could argue he's got like what people call like the Conor McGregor gas tank, where it's high, 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 high twitch, is it? Or fast twitch. So he's good for seven minutes. But then you could just drag him out into deep water and drown him essentially through his gas tank. Um, I think Ovince is going to get this. I think it's just too much experience for Alfonso. Uh, Alonso. I keep calling him Alfonso. I think it's Alonso. Alonso to take right now. I think Alonso is going to come out gun swinging as he always does because that it works. He's got a four inch disadvantage um, and it's three inch height disadvantage. But again, that won't make sense unless he's going to put Ovince to the to the fence, which I don't see him doing. Ovince is Ovince is seriously strong, and he's got more losses than Alonso has competed. So he, uh, I think it's an experience battle. This one, I think it's going to be a good learning curve for Alonso to win two back to uh, two losses back to back, and uh, I think he'll come on a lot stronger in the in the future. But I think I have to back Ovince St. Pru in this. I just think if he can survive the first round against Alonso. He also has tremendous knockout power. What he did to Shogun, who are just still, I love Shogun, so it really hurts me still. But I love Ovince. I think he's a great fighter. Um, Alonzo Manyfield comes out swinging. First round, going to go to the second again. Ovin's going to take control. I think, I think I'm going to say he subs him. I'm going to say somehow Ovin subs him. Maybe another St. Pro choke. Maybe, maybe he gets him in an arm triangle. He does like them sort of positions um if not it might be ground and pound he'll i think it'll go to the deck and i think i think ovince will do him now we get on to the main now maybe i am excited for this one more than the other one but i really like the osp fight we have rank five bantamweight pedro munoz coming off his decision loss to al Jermaine sterling no shame in that before that he had knocked out in round one cody garbrand and brian caraway 
and he's a serious competitor. He likes to trade. He knows he has the power. Hence, he stood his ground with Cody. He, he went, Cody, you want to stand and swing? I'll stand and swing. He did what a Sun Sal wouldn't. And he knocked him out clean from it. And that was the last time, obviously, Garbrand got finished before he came back and then smoked the Sun Sal. He's against a rank eight Frank, Frankie Edgar coming down weight. Frankie was the ex-lightweight champion, then he went down to featherweight. He's been fighting featherweight as the under, undersized man for a very long time. People have been saying, you could fight at bloody flyweight. He doesn't want to fight at flyweight because he said it's not competitive enough. I applaud you for that, Mr. 38 years old, Frankie Edgar. All of fame, come on. He's coming down to bantamweight, fights first person. He gets given Pedro fucking Munoz. Give Frankie a break. My God, 22 wins, eight losses, one draw. Pedro, 18 wins, four losses, one no contest. Frankie has a four inch, a 3.5 inch reach advantage in this. They are the same height of five foot six. So this is the weight class for Frankie. He should have always been here. His last fight, he obviously got smacked up by uh, Korean zombie Chang Sung Young. Uh, before that, he had lost to Max Holloway. So he's not exactly coming off like poor finishes. Obviously, he got knocked out in the last one, which isn't ideal. He's been knocked out, but you know, he got elbowed and uppercutted by um, Brian Ortega as well, which didn't help. But he did beat Cub Swanson three fights ago. But so he definitely can still be up there as a top competitor. Will he be a top competitor against Pedro Munoz? He should not. And I don't believe will with a smart coach like Mark Henry trade with Pedro Munoz. He'd be so silly to do it because Pedro is so slick standing. He's also good in the ground, but I just think, oh, I think Frankie can go to the ground with pretty much anyone his size. His wrestling is superb. His striking is very good, but it's not evolved. His, his wrestling has evolved with the transition with like Eddie Alvarez being in there and there's a beat in his corner, you know, you know, not his corner, but his team. And uh, I think Corey Anderson's at Mark Henry's as well, New Jersey. I think Corey Anderson's at, obviously he's just left the Bellator, which we can talk about. But Will Frankie's striking be as elite as Pedro? I don't see it. Obviously, he could catch him. He could do anything. But I don't think... I think Pedro's work rate is as good as Frankie's. I think Pedro's boxing is better. I think his kickboxing is better. I think his calf kicks are fantastic. I think his clinch work is excellent. His breaks from the clinch, his clinch against the cage, his, his movement, everything works well for Munoz. But he takes more strikes. He likes to trade one. Frankie's smarter. Frankie not trade one to give one, typically. Has lately, obviously, not worked out. So he goes back to plan A. His wrestling has always been his bread and butter. So I do see him implementing a similar game plan to when, do you remember when he fought Yair Rodriguez? I think that's how it's going to go down. Just taking down and ground and pound, and that is it. Get the W in this division. Mark your name. It's a great name to have on your bloody record, Pedro Munoz, right now. Is if, if Pedro... As Frankie to his name sheet, Pedro's going to be, you know, one more fight away from a title fight. And that's the truth of it. So I'm going to say Pedro Munoz wins that one just based on I can't see Frankie. I just can't see how he how he can do it for five rounds. For 25 minutes, can he beat Pedro? You might say he's got so much experience in the cage. He can go 25 minutes. Can Pedro go 25 minutes? That might be enough. A, a, you know, a big factor in it, but I do think Pedro could. I think Pedro is going to win by decision, and then be one fight away from a title fight. And I can see Frankie maybe giving it one more go. If not, I can't see Frankie doing it much longer. He's thirty-eight. If he get don't get nothing out of this division, he's going to go down a flyweight. So that's all that is. Um, right, UFC news. John Jones vacates the belt. I've made a video about this already. But basically, John Jones sent out a series of tweets saying, I'm not going to get the money I want at light heavyweight. Here's the belt, guys. You know, go fight for it. Um, I'll be back at heavyweight pretty much in six months' time. That's the gist of it. He's going to stay in the testing pool. And I believe he wants to make a fight for Stipe, defend the belt against Nganu, retire the greatest of all time. If he does that, I kind of have to give it to him. But I don't want to because I don't like people that have been popped for any kind of drug on my greatest of all time list. So it's kind of hard to. 
which brings us on to the part two of the news. I'm not going into details on that. If you want to, uh, click on the channel below, obviously my channel, and you'll find my video of John Jones vacate the belt. It's my instant reaction to it. Please watch the video. It's, it, I, it, I really enjoy making those little videos, and I hope you guys are watching them. But Reyes versus Jan Blahovic, September 26th. UFC 253. Yes, that is the same card as Israel Adesanya and Paolo Costa. So now this this is just stacked. They normally put the head headliner as the heavier division, is what Dana once won, Dana White once said. They're not going to do that with this. Reyes is not headlining over Izzy. There's no fucking way. Reyes co-main versus uh, versus Jan Blahovic. Who takes that? I mean, Jan Blahovic looked absolutely stellar in his last few performances. He's looked great. He's definitely deserved the title shot. Reyes, whew, I think it's fair to say the MMA community had it at maybe like an 85% of the population think Reyes won against John Jones. I'm one of the few that had it like a draw. I couldn't decide. And I think if you can't decide, it needs to... Right, round three I had as a 9-9 or a 10-10, whatever you want to call it. I had it, I had it even. So I had it two to Reyes draw to the Jones I don't know how so I had it as a draw arguably to Jones I'm not upset with the decision that Jones won but I do get the argument completely of Reyes winning it which is why I'm so happy Reyes is now fighting for a vacant belt granted it would have been so much more satisfying to take it from John Jones but he's now fighting Jan Blachowicz I think Reyes can do Jan Blachowicz I think Reyes is striking is far more superior I think Jan is more powerful, but I think the speed, the athleticism, all goes to Reyes. It all favours him. You've seen how difficult he is to take down as well. John got him down twice. Didn't hold him down for less, more than half a second. Nor, it, it turned into Formula One, where it was talking about the tenths of the second getting up again. Those takedowns shouldn't have counted. Um, Reyes looked absolutely superb. I think Reyes takes that fight against Jan. I'll be making some videos later on down the line about that one with the easy card. That'll be a good. That'll be a good one to talk through. We've got Anderson Silva versus Uriah Hall has been announced for Saturday, October thirty first. That will be Anderson Silva's retirement fight. I hope it's a good one. Um, I don't see Uriah Hall knocking him out or anything, but I hope it's not a boring decision. I hope Anderson gets the send off he wants. I hope it's an entertaining fight. I wish them both well. I don't. Want, I think Uriah Hall should be on his way out as well. Um, Nothing more to say on that until it kind of comes out, to be honest. Um, and then finally, before I wrap up the, the quick little podcast this week, Sean O'Malley. So I made a video on this. Sean O'Malley looked like he got, he definitely got calf kicked um, by Cheeto and it fucked his leg up somehow. Now you've got people like Henry Cejudo and Cody Garbrandt who obviously don't like Sean. And they're saying, hey, he broke it now and he fucking gave up. A lot of people are saying he's a quitter and they're jumping on the hype train. They're coming off the hype train. I was never on it. I've got videos of me talking about how I think Marlon Vera is going to beat him, why I think he's going to beat him, how I think he, Sean's a little overrated right now. People are just hyped because he knocked out a guy that has been in so many wars like Eddie Wineland. Chino Vera is the real deal. And I said this in my predictions. I'm getting a little annoyed. You know when you've got like a favourite band or a favourite movie star that no one knows and then they do one film. You know, my favourite movie star for a long time was Keanu Reeves and then all of a sudden, the last few years, he's been blown up. So everyone's like, oh, I love Keanu Reeves. And I'm like, you ripped on me for having that. Or my favourite Marvel was a Daredevil. Now because of the series, people like Daredevil, not Ben Affleck's one. And it's like, you ripped on me for that, but now you like him. Now I'm getting that. Oh, Oh, you're 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 siding with me now that Sean O'Malley's a bit overrated. Okay, yes, he's a quality fighter, but he is overrated. Nothing has come back. He got X-rayed, his foot, all nerves, everything like that. Nothing is damaged. Nothing. No bruising. Just a little bit of swelling on his knee. That's it. And I'm like, okay, he gave up in that fight. Cheeto hit him with the second elbow. You saw his head snap back, and once his head snapped back, I was like, okay, I'm not against this stoppage. I thought it was a tad early by Herb. And I think Herb would tell you that as well. But then when you see no protesting from Sean, I was like, okay, I, I'm fine with the stoppage. No protest at all. He gave up. They haven't x-rayed his knee yet and they can't do it until the swelling goes down. So I don't want to rush onto nothing's wrong with him and he gave up. But I think that is the term right now. I think 
he got kicked. He he was in agony and he gave up. I can't see it any more than that. Don't take anything away from fucking Marlon Vera. He caused the damage. It's not a lose victory. He caused the damage. He did that to him. So all off the Sean O'Malley train, I guess. But um, yeah, that's all the the pod for this week, guys. Um, thank you for watching. I know it's a slow one, but um, we'll get it out. It'll be, what is it? It's Wednesday today, Wednesday the 19th. A couple of days preview, obviously, to the next one. It's not a main UFC card that's going to blow up, but we'll talk about the next one next week and we'll get, uh, we've got a new guest hopefully coming on next week's pod. Um, yeah. Cheers, guys. Take care. Leave me a comment.